Furious mattress. Yeah. Let's just start with a, just a, a broad outline of the piece. Yeah. Just for those people who haven't heard. <clears throat> okay. So it's 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 one of those plays where you see the outcome of an action, mm. and then you see a little bit of what led up to the action. Mm. And the the action is an an exorcism. No. Yeah. The action is an exorcism, <laughs> and and it opens with a sort of I don't know, long, slow, gruelingly interminable <laughs> vigil <laughs> where the two protagonists of the, um, or it slowly becomes apparent that the two protagonists of the exorcism that seems to have gone dreadfully wrong mm. um, and they can't accept it are waiting for this woman to come back to life. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, Pierce is waiting for his wife, and Anna is, you know, part of the Bible group that they were part of. And then it goes back, and we meet the living else, mm. who is not wanting to have an exorcism, mm. and but then sort of comes around to it, and it's and sort of like the pathway. And we meet a, a, a fourth character, as a sort of young man who seems to have limited experience <laughs> in exorcisms. Although he's quite sure of himself. Yeah, so it's got, as you can tell, it's got a sort of black humour to it, but also a, um, a, a, a pathos to it. Mm. Um, a lot of pathos to it. It's an incredibly sad, yeah, sad, sad, is. sad story for, really for all of them, really, mm. which was something that it took me a while to sort of, you know, get sympathy for all the characters. I think mm. when I, my first draft was was much more harsh, much more broad in its sort of almost caricature of yeah. the exorcists. Mm. Um, and I and I sort of pulled it back and pulled it back and pulled it back over a number of drafts mm. Mm. till I made it a lot more of a human <laughs> story. And I'm, if I remember rightly, it, it, it sort of flicks off a real or, or a news event, doesn't yes, it? Yes, right? I seem does. to remember it in rural Victoria somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, it, and I read the um, court transcripts. It was um, a woman called Joan Volmer, and mm. she did die, and um, and they did hold a vigil, mm. and right up till sort of like till the trial, the her husband, I think his name was maybe Ralph Volmer, but I can't don't mm. quote me, um, was was saying no, she will come back to life. Even after she was buried, you know, like oh, he right. was totally delusional, or you know, and it. And is that a thing in exorcisms? Is that a thing that because in the play there's this quite strong image that you see twice, where they talk about um, a submerged heartbeat, yeah. and that there's a kind of a period before God. I don't think sparks. so. Is that, was that something you made up? Oh, I or? think I made yeah. that up. Okay. Yeah. It's got the ring of, uh, of something <laughs> <Yeah>. about it. <laughs> I think I made it up. Yeah, <coughs> no, no. It just went, it just went awry mm. and they couldn't face it, mm. basically. But that said, I didn't really, I think I moved a long way away from that case and used it for my own devices to talk about yeah, of course. a failed marriage and to talk about um, sort of... Um, Hatred of women, mm. and and the, and and the case had little elements of that, but mm. I, I shifted it a mm. lot, and I would wouldn't say that it was a, um, uh, you know, a true record <laughs> of of that of amazing mm. of that amazing exorcism and and what happened. Mm. They ended up going to jail, you know, for what they did, mm. Mm. and yeah, it was pretty sad. I'm kind of really interested to talk to you about. And this is, I think, you know, sometimes very difficult for, for people to talk about their own work in this way. So yeah. we'll just have a dig around and see what we can find. But <laughs> you've got a very, I, I, I'm not sure how you feel about this word, but you, I would say, someone says to me, what's Melissa Reeve's style? I would kind of say quirky. I know that's a sort of a meaningless word yeah. in a way. That's right. But what I, I, when I say that, what I mean is that um, unlike almost every other playwright that I know, you don't tend to write drama as in straight out kind of um, everyone's terribly serious and, you know, um, talking about issues. Although your plays are packed with issues and packed with sorrow and sadness and loss and all the things we've spoken about. Yeah. They're always blended with a kind of 
fantastic, surreal, slightly kind of quirky comic edge that goes through everything. Yeah. Is that something that's just arrived in you or something that you kind of sat down at some stage and went, you know what, I think that speaks more or like, is that something that you struggle for or just naturally occurs? How does it? I think arrived Mm. is the perfect word. Yeah. Actually, I, I, I certainly haven't analysed overly mm. and I'm a bit wary of sure. over analysing yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how I make them, mm. you know? Mm. And um, I think it's, I, I just, I, I, I definitely have a procedure mm. and <laughs> <laughs> that I follow and sometimes change. And funnily enough, in Furious Mattress, I did change it. I'm, I'm sometimes quite um, methodical, you mm. know, and I go, I go, ah, oh, I want to write about this and what do I like about this? And then I read, 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 and I maybe interview, interview, interviewed, and then I go, ooh, I get about three or four or five scenes that I go, oh, I can't wait to write that. Yeah. That's going to be a great one. Oh, good, good. <laughs> and might start that a bit early, but still sort of work out a scenario that sort of links them all. I'm often sort of quite, um, you know, this happened and then this happened and then, you know, I can be mm. very, um, what's that called? Methodical? No, or, um, chronological. Yep. Mm. But this one, um, I did go, maybe I'll just dive in and write it without mm. a really worked out scenario and that had its pleasures but also it actually made rewriting it quite hard yeah i have changed and chopped and (laughs) chipped and you know like this play you know so much like a did you always know that you were going to do that time i did i did yeah yeah. um yeah so that was that was there Mm. although i did play with that and go oh shouldn't i better you know no that was that was just there but in terms of what you said about my style, which is a slightly different question, um, yeah, it was just a sort of delightful surprise that they're funny. Yeah. And you just go, oh, great. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, um, do you giggle when you're writing those I scenes? Do, yeah, I do, I yeah, do. Yeah. And having been an actor, you know, like, I think that's a, li- a large part of how yeah. I write. You sort I, of go, oh, how, how much I would love to act yeah, this? Or, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And I, pe- I perform them a bit. And, uh, <laughs> we should video that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big question. I don't know if there's a, a sensible answer to it, but do you, what do you see that, what do you see that theatre does most effectively in the world? Or uh, I guess, I mean, Speaking of us all getting older, what keeps you in it? What what brings you back to it, and yeah. what oh, fascinates that's a great you about question. it? Question. Um, love of actors mm. and acting as a marvelous, marvelous thing, mm. and being up close to those fabulous creatures mm. and their bodies, mm. and and the you know. You know, the, the community that is made by an audience with yeah. a mm. um, group of people performing for them. I mean, it's magic. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs>